as promised, we're starting her up tonight. This week, been doing a lot of work. Got some things installed, got some things in the mail. Progress, man. Lots of progress. So, let's check out some of that progress, man. Number one, we got the exhaust that's supposed to come off of both of the dump pipes and head back to our exhaust. Already tried to test fit it, but uh, as I knew would be the case, it does not fit. The steering arm is right there, and solid lines that screw into the steering arm from the actual rack itself, those are in the way of that dump pipe right there. So we got to figure that out. It's fine. Brake booster line is installed. Fuel line is installed, and if you look really close, this is a DEI heat shield wrap that is on the fuel lines themselves. When I was putting the engine bay back together, all the way beyond and under the car, this same wrap is on the solid hard lines as well, all the way behind the heat shield. So we've got lots and lots of heat coverage, or coverage from the heat I should say, uh, all the way up and around the back, and then the hose dips down goes under the plenum so it stays nice and tucked and shows up right here. And check this out, man. Aw, snap. Our throttle cable is installed. And let me tell you what, man, there is no better feeling than being able to do this. Like, having the engine in the car and all that stuff, yeah, they're physically one, but for these two things to be mechanically one, bruh. This is the best feeling ever, man. Loving it. So now the car and the beast are mechanically one. Oh, another thing I put inside the car is check this out. Boost gauge is installed and I went with an auto meter mechanical, but this is the Z series mechanical boost gauge. And uh, the reason why is guys, it has to be a Z series for a reason. Do you see what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah. My last Z, my very first Z, I had Z gauge, Z series gauges all up in it, and uh, it just looks so natural inside the car. It's it's great. Nothing's out of place about it. We ran the line behind into this pod from here under the dash, and then that vacuum line appears right here in this grommet just above the slave master cylinder, and this guy right here is what we're gonna tee in over on that side where we're also going to run our map sensor line to the computer. Now one very, very, very important part that we got in today that I talked about last time we were together was the drop resistor, man. Oh yeah. And this box, let me tell you what, man, this box is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Let's see what we got in here because I really thought this was gonna be small. There's actually a drop resistor inside the fender well of the Z32 for the automatic transmission. This is, holy cow. Look at the size of this thing. Nice, brand new. And let me give a quick shout out to the guy that I bought this from. I'll put his information right here. But uh, he's been the go-to guy for a lot of the RB hard to find stuff like gaskets, seals, it's like really small one-off weird stuff man I've never it's it's been a never fail situation going with that guy so I've also figured out exactly what I'm gonna be doing about the air filter situation originally I was gonna go with the apexy but after taking those measurements and looking at what we have to work with there is not enough room especially for this turbo and uh, this turbo here I mean we've got to get two filters sharing this small space here and the biggest thing is is the fact that the frame rails right here and this turbo is right here. So, Greddy and HKS both make a mushroom shaped filter. It's got a uh, 150 millimeter base, which is uh, roughly six inches. I've already measured it out because I happen to have a set of bowls that are the same size as that filter. And one is gonna sit perfectly right here in this little nook and cranny like that. And the other one's gonna sit right there. Our air filter situation is awesome, figured out finished finito. The next step is to get the ECU installed and uh, get a base map on it. Now, I have my best good friend, Tom Van Dyke of Custom Import Arts, a GTR specialist in Belgium, already creating the custom map for this engine. So 
He should be sending that over to me. It's gonna be our base map to get started. I'm really excited to see what that thing does. All right, next day, and uh, today we're working more on the interior. I already started working on the, uh, the shifter here. Again, our whole engine is sitting half an inch back, so we're doing a little bit of fabricating to get this thing uh, in the right place in the right way. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and start, actually, yeah, and and on top of it, my drill's battery died, so I'm kind of in a waiting game. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the uh, on the passenger side with the computer and all the other stuff that's going on over there. Since it's all torn apart, I want to go ahead and install a power line because someday I actually plan to put, you know, maybe a stereo or an amp or something in the car, and it never hurts to go ahead and have that stuff done while you already got the car apart. So I'm gonna turn to my big handy dandy box o wires. And uh, this thing is like every wiring harness I've ever collected over like 15 years, man. There's like a harness to a GTST in here, some Z32s, other freaking junk. And uh, this, I actually ripped out of a car I think I bought for parts or I don't remember, but yeah, perfectly nice high gauge power wire. Gonna go ahead and put it in the Z. Once we get that ran, the next step will go, go ahead and put this old AC piece in. This is the piece that had the uh, the condenser on the inside of the car. Now it's all hollow because we don't have air conditioning. So we'll put that back in so we have a complete uh, ducting system inside the car and uh, yeah. Progress, 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 man. I actually took a time out, went to my daughter's volleyball game, which was awesome. They won. Let me show you what's been going on, man. Lots of progress. Got the power cable installed. That's ran all the way nice and clean into the trunk. Eventually there will be two amps back here, one for all the component speakers, one for a 10 inch sub. You can also see inside the igniter in, there's the drop resistor and the ECUs connected, complete with vacuum line. Now it's just kind of in, uh, everything's like installed as far as where those go, but as I thought the ECU would probably fit into the 300ZX bracket. It does not. I need to design some brackets, build some brackets, uh, figure out a smooth, clean way to install that. Um, back here, you can see here's our uh, vacuum line signal for the Haltech, which goes up and tees off here for the boost gauge, right here on the back of this vacuum gallery. So that's all good and all fine. I went ahead and reused the 300ZX uh, power and ground cables, so just got to get that connected to the starter and everything's good with that. I had to back up a little bit because there was a couple things I forgot. One, I forgot a freaking fuel filter. So I installed a fuel filter here and you could see it is mounted using the uh, this bracket here and this T-bolt bracket that's that's mounting the fuel filter is actually a bracket I bought for the coolant overflow jug which ended up being too small for it but it was perfect for this and it's Perfectly solid over here, nice and out of the way. Really looks clean. Yeah. I want to create balance, and I'll tell you what. One thing that I've noticed that the GTR does is it's unbalanced, right? So you most of your builds, I mean, there's going to be so much stuff over here. There's lots of piping, there's going to be air filters, there's brake equipment. Everything's over here, and we want to balance it out. Next thing we need to do, <laughs> Gretty oil filter. This is why this project is not something everybody does. It's little crap like this. Let's go ahead and get ready to hook up to some power just for the sake of getting into the ECU and downloading the, the base information so we can shoot it over to uh, Custom Import Arts and get our base map for the initial start, man. All right, man, here we are in the car. No power running to it yet because as always, check the manual, right? Gotta check the manual, man. Got to check the manual. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, okay. Done. With ECU installed, do not attempt to start the vehicle, okay? We need the ECU manager software from Haltech.com. All right. Right there. 32-bit? Come on, Haltech. Get what you game. Finished installing. Aha. Oh, yeah. Pretty sweet, man. ECU is offline. Yep, it absolutely is. What is this? Connect, disconnect. Okay, well that's what we want, but we need to give ourselves some power first. Everything about this makes me nervous. I'm not, everything's fine. It's just, there's just so much invested that I'm like nervous at every step now. 
Even though I feel pro. I don't know. Car has power. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, car has power. Yep. Okay, I don't know. I guess let's go ahead and connect the USB first. Okay. And key on in the ignition. Okay. Oil pressure's off the charts. That's, uh, that's bizarre. ECU is offline. Let's try to go ahead and connect to the ECU. ECU could not be found. Let me check my port settings. Alright, so it's actually a good while later and uh, I still cannot get the ECU to connect to the computer. Done a lot of troubleshooting, checked all the, uh, the power running through the car. Uh, everything seems to check out, but going off of the wiring diagram, I cannot get power to the computer. So I'm looking at the ECCS relay, swap that out because I had an extra one, everything's fine with that. And I think I know what the problem is. I looked at one more schematic diagram and it showed that the signal that flows through the fuel pump ignition relay is the one that goes to the ECCS. I'm potentially as a trigger? I would think it's the other way around. Anyway, it's possible that putting that relay, that fusible link back in will actually get power to our computer. The only other thing that it will do is it will also power up the fuel pump which will charge the fuel lines and just, even though we're ready for that, I want to swap out the fuel pump. <sighs> Decisions, man. I need to find out if, if this is the right answer. <laughs> so, okay, let's try it. So, putting that uh, fusible link in for the, the fuel pump, I think that's what did it, man. Look. Aw, oh, snap. Little blue light. Little blue light, and here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Just please. Dang it! Camera battery died. Switch it to the iPhone real quick. Let's go up to connect. And... Oh snap, do you see that? <laughs> it is connected to the ECU, man. Just gonna stay full screen here. Oh! Bruh. We are connected to the computer, man, which is connected to the engine. Fantastic. All right, little piece of data I need. The firmware version for Tom, so tools, firmware version. All right. We'll contact him in a little bit. I'll send all this information over to him. He's on the other side of the world in Europe, obviously, and it's uh, it's right around dinner time here, so it's probably six or seven in the morning for him. I'm sure he's probably not even up yet, but uh, uh, awesome. I'm gonna eat dinner. I'm probably gonna go run out and get the oil I need, and then uh, shoot, man. Either later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. Let's start her. Let's start her up. When you're this far along in a project like this, just doing things like this feel like such a big deal, man. So the manual says that this engine holds 4.8 liters of oil. Uh, however, for the N1 setup, it holds uh, 5.8 liters. Now, we are using the N1 oil pump, and the difference between the regular Skyline setup and the N1 setup is that the N1 setup uses an external oil cooler whereas the non N1 uses the uh, the oil cooler that we showed not too long ago so since we're running an external oil cooler which may even be quite bigger than stock I don't exactly know we're uh, we're definitely going with the 5.8 liters I've already put five quarts in so that's uh, slightly under five liters uh, we're gonna go ahead all the plugs have been removed and everything's out of there, so we have zero air pressure inside the system. Time to hook up the battery, crank the starter, and get this oil pump to uh, lubricate the whole thing, and then we'll move on to trying to give it a start. All right, man, while we've been working on all those other things, we have received the initial startup plan from Tom over at Custom Import Arts. So let's go ahead and get this loaded 
New map is loading up. ECU is online. Let's get Tom on the phone for the initial start, man. Hey, what's up, mate? Hey, dude. What's going on? Good, good, good. Too hot here for me. Uh, I know the feeling. How are things progressing? So I've already primed the engine with uh, oil. Everything's good to go. The levels look good to go. I am connected. I got the new map uploaded. Can you uh, put me on TeamViewer? I could try and set that up. So with TeamViewer, Tom from Custom Import Arts is actually remoted into my machine right now and can look at the ECU in my car all the way from Europe, man. This is this is freaking technology at its finest. So if I had Wi-Fi in the car, I could be driving down the street and you could be like as if you were riding along with me. Yes, some people do it with the mobile phone connection and it's really, really, really good. That's amazing. <laughs> Here you have the fuel map. So when the cars, uh, when the car runs rich for me, you're in idle, you'll best select the site like this, or like this. Data in here came from uh, injection map, so it's possible that it's running extremely rich in this area, where there is boost and high RPM, which you won't be seeing anytime soon, as I uh, think you're not going to drive it so. Yeah. Um, second map in the fuel, uh, setup is the AFR map. Why? This is important. It's because when we're running in closed loop mode with the wide man sensor, this will be the number uh, of air fuel ratio that will be the target. Um, this little uh, blue circle is actually where you are, so you're running a little bit under 12 volts at the battery at this pump. Yeah. Been sitting here for a little while. Check the trip, you will see something special. Um, these are the six cylinders. And you're using the stock intake plenum. Um, the stock intake plenum has a little bit of trouble in the fifth and the sixth cylinder. You might have seen that the sixth runner is completely alone in the back. Yeah. And so, due to the air flowing uh, in our waste in that area, uh, we have some obstructions from the air in the fifth cylinder. And the sixth cylinder need more fuel. Oh, nice. So, uh, we add, yeah, it runs lean there. So, in this map, we can control. And you'll see that the 6th and the 5th cylinder are running minor adjustments to uh, keep it running rich enough. Sweet. So then we go to the ignition map. Ignition map, um, this is a map uh, I've installed. It's a very, very safe map. Um, you will see that um, it's not aggressive um, in this area. Let me try and show you like that. No, that's not me. Here you see I'm very safe. This area. So, um, why um, save there? Detonation protection. Depending on the boost you're running and the air temperature and the fuel you're running, you can add up to three, four um, degrees of ignition here. Nice. But again, fuel and temperature are extremely important there. That's why it's really needed to have an intake air temperature that's. Uh, good enough to uh, get the fastest results to the ECU. So Tom checked out the ECU, everything looks good, learned a lot, hopefully you guys can pick up on some of that. I'm probably going to edit it a lot for the vlog, but I might just put the raw conversation file up too, just so you guys can learn something more about all the settings and stuff. As a piece of insurance, just to in absolutely be certain that oil is going all the way through the engine. He has recommended that I check a certain hose out. So the oil line that goes from the rear turbo back into the pan, he wants me to take that tube off and uh, just ensure there's actually oil in there. And he says that is the last, one of the last points of the engine to actually get lubricated. And if there's oil in that tube, then our pump is 100% good to go and we're gonna call him back. All right, man, I have double, triple, quadruple checked everything. I have troubleshot the mess out of this, and all I'm doing is building doubt in my mind, and I have no doubt in my work. I trust my work. Even though I'm not seeing what I'm being told I should see, I trust my work, and every indication that I've got so far, everything's good to go. So, let's start the engine. <laughs> Uh. Okay, here we go. Neutral.
first start. Let's do an inspection make sure everything's okay. Man, I am I am so elated, man. Beyond elated. And check this out. That is a beautiful thing. That is oil off of that turbo return line. So now we know oil's getting all through the system. And uh, and going off of some of the research that I did, it looks like that it's uh, these engines are known to get an airlock in them. So when everything's first installed dry, and there will be like a, I guess, an air bubble inside the oil pump. And uh, a lot of people, what they do is they backwards feed oil through the oil cooler line and into the oil pump. You turn the engine backwards a little bit, da 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 da, da then you reprime it forward and everything. So, yeah, we're good to go, man. Oil everywhere. Super happy, super elated. It's in. It's freaking running, dude. I'm turning the key of a Z and starting a freaking RB. Like, that is legit a thing. Special shout out to Tom Van Dyke from Custom Import Arts in Belgium. Look him up, customimportarts.com. I'll put a link to his thing in the description. How incredible was it that uh, not only did he build us a map, but he was able to like basically tell net into our computer and look at it in real time hooked up, man. Amazing, amazing, amazing dude. Best friend, freaking known him forever. Love you to death, Tom. Thank you so much. Whew. Lots of work now. Radiator is on its way. According to the, the tracking information, Radiator should be here Tuesday. It may be about two, three weeks before you see me again, but when you do, man, we'll be working on all the coolant system, getting that squared away, and uh, yeah, all good, all fine. So, ciao tutti, and aloha. Bye-bye.